I'm Anna Trippanel and today we'll be discussing what do human rights mean for companies. In another video we discussed how human rights are core to who we are as human beings. We also discussed the fact that under international law states have obligations and duties to respect, protect and fulfill human rights. So what do human rights mean for companies? Of course companies impact people. For good and for bad, companies create jobs and help families with their livelihoods. Companies provide products to people, some of them even life-saving. Companies pay taxes and invest in communities. So many positive impacts companies can have that positively impact people's human rights. But at the same time, companies we know can also have a negative impact on people, sometimes very negative. Workers can lose their lives working in unsafe conditions. Workers can be trapped in jobs that exploit them. Communities can be evicted from their lands to make way for company sourcing, and the list goes on. We have what we call soft law that governs what human rights mean for companies, which is also shaping national laws that apply to companies as we speak. The United Nations Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights, endorsed by the UN Human Rights Council in 2011, essentially say companies are expected to respect people's human rights as they conduct their business. They're not taking on the same international legal obligations of states, but they do have a responsibility to ensure that as they run their business, they have systems in place to avoid negatively impacting on people's human rights. Of course, by respecting human rights, companies also play a role in promoting them. But the UNDPs change the order here and say to companies, make sure you have systems in place to respect people first. And then we can talk about taking on a role in other feel good human rights projects on top of this respect. Which rights are relevant? A number of rights are relevant for companies depending on what they do, where they are operating and where they're sourcing from and who their business partners are. Companies are expected to use a specific internationally recognized methodology called salience, which enables companies to prioritize their human rights risks depending on where these rights can be impacted the most severely throughout the business. We'll delve into this in another video. Companies may prioritize, for instance, certain rights of their workers, the right to enjoy just and favourable conditions of work, or the right to freedom of association and collective bargaining, or the right to be free from slavery and forced labour. They may prioritise the rights of neighbouring communities, for instance, their right to an adequate standard of living, or their, their rights to, to life. They may prioritise the rights of consumers, uh, right to privacy or, or right to health are other examples. But what's a company to do when a government doesn't meet its part of the bargain. Governments often don't meet their own human rights obligations and this makes it so much harder for companies. There's a framework laid out in the UNGPs for this scenario, which we'll delve into in another video. We are seeing that companies are more and more impacted by the international human rights system. For instance, recent UN human rights reports are impacting companies in quite significant ways and human rights law is used more and more to sue governments for the activities of companies. We've definitely come a very long way from when I was at law school and I had to follow the two specialties of human rights and business in parallel because they were viewed as having nothing to do with each other. Thank you for watching and see you next time.